Welcome back to Microbiology Lab. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the coagulase test. This is a test we do in microbiology that's generally done to distinguish two types of Staphylococcus organisms. That is Staphylococcus aureus and Staphylococcus epidermidis. So these are two species under that genus Staphylococcus, but one of them is the virulent species. That is, it is much more dangerous when you come in contact with it, especially if it infiltrates your body. And that is Staphylococcus aureus. And the mechanism by that is that they produce an enzyme called coagulase. So what is coagulase? Well, first of all, before we talk about coagulase, let's talk about your normal clotting system in your body. So you know intuitively that if you get cut, on anywhere in your body, you bleed because you're exposing uh, your internal environment, that is the inside of your vasculature, to the external environment. So blood leaks out. But that's not good if it continues to leak out, so we have to coagulate and produce a clot. Now naturally, when coagulation happens under normal conditions, it's going to require a complicated series of enzymes and so on and so forth that we're not going to talk about here. But it only happens when you cut yourself, when you expose the inside of that blood vessel to the external environment and blood starts leaking out. However, some bacteria, such as Staphylococcus aureus, have this enzyme called coagulase. And this enzyme is artificially able to convert fibrinogen into fibrin. Now, even in your normal system right now, in your blood, that is the plasma, you have this protein called fibrinogen. It's just right in your blood right now, floating free. It's soluble in the blood, and it doesn't do anything. But in your body, when you actually cut yourself, this cascade of enzymes that are involved in coagulation, they cause fibrinogen to convert into fibrin. And when these fibrin individual units come together, they actually form a visible clot. And this is actually what prevents further blood from leaking out of your vasculature and into the external environment. The problem with coagulase is, is that it's able to bypass all those normal mechanisms in your body and artificially convert fibrinogen into fibrin. And this occurs without a cut. So this is occurring abnormally. So if you had an organism in your body, such as Staphylococcus aureus, somehow made its way into your blood and it did have this enzyme coagulase, it could actually convert fibrinogen into fibrin, producing a clot inside your vasculature. And that's a problem because now you have a clot that's floating free throughout your bloodstream. That's called an embolus. And if that embolus was to go into your coronary arteries, it could produce a heart attack. If it goes into your cerebral arteries in your brain, it could produce a stroke. And that's very, very bad. In this video, we're going to explain how we actually perform the coagulase test. So, um, in some courses, this is actually done in the test tube. Um, I'll explain how it's done in the test tube first, and then we'll look at how we do it in my lab, which is actually on a slide. If you're performing this coagulase test in a test tube, what you would do first is you'd inoculate the bacteria into the broth here, and then you'd incubate it to grow it up and then you'd put plasma in it. Now plasma is a component of blood. It's in your bloodstream right now. And specifically plasma has fibrinogen in it. Okay? And so if your bacteria that are in this test tube do not have coagulase, then you get a negative result. And notice as compared from here on the left to after we add plasma, it's still in the liquid form. Right? You see it's still in the liquid form. That's a negative result, and that would indicate the organism being coagulase negative. This is actually what we would expect for Staphylococcus epidermidis, which is sort of the non-pathogenic form of, of Staph. Okay? However, if we took the same test tube, but it had Staphylococcus aureus in it, and we added the plasma, we could get one of two results. Um, if there was a lot of coagulase present, we might actually have the entire fluid in here solidify, as you see here on the bottom. But in other cases, and this is actually more common, you'll actually see clumps that form within the fluid. So both of these are considered positive results. And the reason that here on the bottom this completely solidifies, or you have clumps up here, just generally clumping together, is because you're forming the clot. You're forming fibrin. So literally this right here, this little clump right here, or the whole thing down here, 
is just a solid clot. It's the result of the bacterial coagulase converting that fibrinogen into fibrin. So that's how this test is generally done and interpreted in a test tube. When we do it on a microscope slide, it's a little bit different. And specifically, we do it in what's called a depression slide. So it's basically a thick microscope slide with a well in it. And so this test is done in the well itself. Now, when you run this test in a depression slide, all you're going to do is you're going to mix together the plasma with your organism of interest, such as Staphylococcus aureus or Staphylococcus epidermidis. And you just mix it for a few seconds and you observe the results. Now, if you have bacteria that are coagulase positive, you need to observe one of two things. Either you need a full clot or partially clotted with visible clumps. Over here on the right side, we actually see a bunch of clumps here within the fluid of the plasma. These are actually the result of fibrinogen being converted to fibrin by the enzyme coagulase. And this result over here on the right is what we would expect for Staphylococcus aureus. Those are coagulase positive organisms, and so these clumps that form are literally just clots that are the result of fibrinogen being converted to fibrin. Now, for coagulase negative organisms, like this on the left, an example being Staphylococcus epidermidis, these should generally just be in the fluid phase completely. And so if you get a result that looks like this, that's going to be coagulase negative. Those organisms do not have coagulase. The key with this test is when you're looking at it on the slide, you're looking for these little clumps like this. And if you don't have those, you're going to assume it's a coagulase negative organism. All right? So, Hopefully this gave you a good understanding of how to actually interpret the coagulase test, whether you're running it on a slide or running it in a test tube, and a little bit about the theory of the test itself. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.